Hello, Mr. Kaczynski with you. This is uh, Section S, Skill 3 of IXL's Algebra 1. And today we're going to find the slope of a graph. Okay, so slope is the rate at which a graph goes up or down. Um, it's a constant rate, rate for slope. And here we go. All right, so I might look at this y-intercept here. It's sitting at 20. And I might see this next point on the graph maybe right here that's at 30 60 okay so the slope of this graph would be how much it goes up from one point to the other divided by how much it goes to the right so some people say rise over run or change in y that's our y values over change in x so this goes from 20 to 40 or to 60 that's a change of 40 and the x values go from 0 to 30, so that's a change of 30. So the slope is just this ratio of 40 over 30, which obviously can be simplified to 4 thirds, and that's how we'll leave the slope. Every time the y value goes up by 4, the x value goes up by 3. That's what slope measures. Okay, let's do this again. I see this point, 5, 1, pretty easy to identify. And then this point right here is at 6, 3, pretty easy to identify as well. So that's an increase of from 1 to 3, that's 2. And the x value went from 5 to 6, that's an increase of 1. So our slope is 2 over 1, also known as just 2. Now other people might say, well, I noticed this point and this point, and that's a rise of one, two, three, four. So shouldn't the slope be four? Well, the y values went up four because the x values went up two. And four divided by two is still two. So no, the slope is two no matter how you look at this. Even going backwards, it would be uh, down four divided by negative 2, and that would still be positive 2. The right, difference between this graph and the other ones we've worked with is that the line is going down from left to right. All right, really doesn't change much, though. This time, we just have to look for the fall of the graph as opposed to the rise of the graph. And I see it goes down from 40 to 30. That's a decrease of 10. And then over to the right from 0 to 20, that's an increase of 20. So the slope here is negative 10 over 20, which can be simplified to negative 1 half. So in this case, we have a negative slope. We also have a fraction. Well, we started off with a fraction, 4 thirds, so that's nothing new to us. So far we've just looked at the first quadrant, but this graph deals with all four quadrants on the coordinate plane. So let's look at this one. This one's kind of tough because it's, it's difficult to identify um, which point or points the graph crosses. But I'm pretty sure negative 10, 20. And then I'm just looking across and I'm looking for a good, clean point. And I think the next one I see here is at 80, 0. And if I work to the left, See, it doesn't quite hit those grid lines. I think the next one it hits is right there. Okay, so we have to identify or look at this one a little closer. Here it goes down from 40 to 20, down 20, and then over from negative 100 to negative 10. That's an increase of 90. And then again, down 20, and then from 10 to 80, that's an increase of 90. So our slope is negative 20 over 90, which equals negative 2 ninths when we simplify it. Negative 2 ninths. And one last one here. Can't see where it crosses either axis, but that doesn't really matter to us. All right, so I might identify that point and that point, okay. So let's look at this change from 40 to 60. That's an increase of 40. 
and from negative 90 to negative 80, that's an increase of 10. So we do our change in x, 40, or our change in y, 40, divided by our change in x, 10, and 40 divided by 10 is 4. It doesn't have to be a fraction. It can come out as an integer, but we do always want to simplify. So in this case, the slope is 4. All right, that's how you, uh, uh, that's how you find the slope of a graph. Excuse me. All right, good luck with that.